Right there. Hello and welcome to Fishing on Northwest. My name is Tommy Donlin. <laughs> what do you think, Tommy? It's the best. Hello and welcome to Fish on Northwest. Wayne England, Tommy Donlin coming to you from the Fish on Northwest studio here in Olympia, Washington. And did you feel that little briskness in the air? Up Man, it's a little cool 70 out. 70-something degree days yeah. out there. Yeah, I was getting used to that sunshine. I uh, got a little sunburn uh, actually out there spring fishing. Yeah. We'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, sorry, I got distracted. I just uh, wanted to throw that weather thing in because, man, it caught me off guard. I don't know what you all are out doing today, but it was a brisk one. So wanna welcome everybody to the show. If it's your first time joining us here on Root Sports, uh, take a little bit of time. Jump on over to our webpage, www.fishhuntnw.com. They're going to find some insightful bits of information, lots of video content and blogs. Also, some coupon codes that you need to take advantage of over at Edge Rods. Click on that coupon. Use FHN20 at checkout for your coupon code. You're going to save 20% on all Edge Rods all the time, not previously attached to any other reduced pricing or special. And, of course, Phelps Game Calls, Fish Hunt NW10 at checkout. You're going to save 10% on all calls uh, all year long. So, you know, Tommy, we uh we probably got to start talking turkey hunting. I know we do. Long, it's right? coming up quick. I've been so buried yep. with everything else going on. I'm kind of not even in the. I haven't really wrapped my head around it. I I got last year's trophy bird still the taxidermy, so I'm just kind of like, eh, you've yeah. been there, done that. But yeah. I do want to take advantage of. I actually saw buddy uh, uh, Luis uh, Villa Gomez over there out of Bogans. They got some turkey stuff going on, mm -hmm. and I thought, you know what, it might be worth a drive. To head over to that corner of the state this year and maybe go chase some turkeys over there. Yeah. It, I mean, we got the best turkey hunting in the United States. I mean, we really do. It's amazing. And people don't realize yeah. that. So yeah. we need to get on, get, you need to get on our program here and get caught up with the folks all about the turkey hunting. But uh hey, uh, by the way, we did get out springer fishing the last couple of days here, Monday, Tuesday, April 1st and 2nd. And it was our invite trip. Had a couple of folks join us there. Uh big thanks to Josh Carlton, owner and operator, mm -hmm. Northwest Drifters Guided Sport Fishing. Um, weather was amazing. It really, uh, I didn't think it was going to be like 70 plus degrees. Right. It was really toasty and no wind. Um, had a couple takedowns. You know, we had a couple of the winners of the contest jump on board there. Chase Springer's with us. We had, uh, Corey, Cassandra Guild and Chris Ching, and they had a great time. It was enjoyable just to kick back, relax and fish. Mm -hmm. A couple takedowns that didn't stick was the best we could muster. Looks like Springer's picked up a little bit today. And uh, the next few days will be telling. And you and I got some statistics we're we jumping to later here in the show. Kind of wrap our head around the production and how this run is currently performing compared to historical. Data. That's right. So yep, we'll the 10-year average. So I want to thank those guys for coming along. Also, Bill Herzog joined us for a couple of days. Jordan was there. Scott Cole was able to jump in for a day. We did have a good time. And thanks again, Josh, uh, for inviting us all out to spend a couple of days on the boat. Okay, running down the show. Got a busy one, as always. Part one of our North Puget Sound Rivers uh, steelhead catch and release with buddy Mike Ainsworth and, yes, Bill Herzog. He's been following me around a lot lately. Tommy. Yes, he has. <laughs> we had a pretty good outing up there, and we're going to show you part one and then part two of our steelhead outing as we emphasize old-school methods. And we really got into and stuck with some, some successful drift fishing. It was fantastic. Then uh, welcoming to the show guest tonight, Dave Johnson, Pacific Fisheries Management Council. That's the PFMC. Updates on the NOF process north of Falcon and how our fall seasons are shaping up. A lot of people are messaging us up here at Fish on Northwest and asking, so we're going to try to get some answers out of Dave. Part two of Dave, the still of Guamish. Boy, the stilly, as it's known, Tommy. The frustration and the impact it has on our Puget Sound recreational opportunities. We're going to kind of delve into why that is and why it continues to plague us in, at times and keeping us off the water. Then we'll jump into part three of our successful uh, catch and release wall steelhead outing. I know you guys are going to enjoy that for sure. Uh, like we mentioned, Tommy, we're going to get into Springers by the numbers. How the run's performing thus far. Also, how does it compare to previous years? And uh, are we 
and why. I'm going to also break down why we're also heading back up north for some more seal hit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that gives you an indication of the spring <laughs> run. So we got some more things to uh, check in on that regard. Had such a great time up there at Skagitsock Fishery, that region up there, and what's going on. Man, is it busy. There yeah. are tons of folks participating. You guys, you guys did well. It kind of surprised me a little bit, the success that you guys ran into. We had a pretty successful day. Yeah. And then the, the next day, we weren't able to get out. But, um, yeah, the, the one day we hit the water, boy, we had not only a lot of fun, but we got some quality fish. Mm -hmm. And we're going we're gonna to get to enjoy that this evening. So don't go anywhere. Jump it out for a quick break. We come back. Parts one and two up there north of Puget Sound Rivers, catch and release steelhead. I think you're going to enjoy this. After this break, right here, Fish on Northwest. Defiance Marine is the one-stop shop for the Pacific Northwest Angler. Defiance Marine guarantees the best price on a new and best service on a repower for your current boat. Defiance Marine is a Honda Premier dealership and one of the largest on the West Coast. Defiance Marine is a boat dealer who proudly sells Defiance, Allied, and Arima boats. All boats are built by West Coast fishermen for West Coast fishermen. Defiance Marine has all your boating needs to help you get out on the water. If you're looking for the best fishing rods in the world, you really do need to take a look at the edge rods. I designed and built new machinery, and I think this new machinery has enabled us to build blanks like no other company can build without this equipment. There is no other rods in the world that are as good as these rods. You owe it to yourself to take a good look at them. For more than 90 years, you've entrusted one brand to guide you towards living the lifestyle you've always dreamed of. Now you can entrust affiliated Better Homes and Gardens real estate professionals to interpret your needs and help you find the home in which to live your dream through every stage of your home buying or selling process. And through every stage of your life, there's Better Homes and Gardens real estate. Expect better. See if the mountain makes a, an appearance today. I don't think so. Though. Saw Sock Mountain has been long, long time. Yeah, it's beautiful. All right, guys. Hey, good morning. Uh, once again, FHN on the water. Unbelievable scenery around here. We are way up north. Uh, this is no secret. It's uh, we got a couple weeks left on the Skagit and the Sock River, and today we're with Buddy Mike Ainsworth, First Light Guide Service, and I also have an individual. I'm sure. All of you are going to enjoy today, uh, weather permitting, of course. All right, well, uh, who you got with you there, Mike? Uh, this would be Mr. Hers to the Zog. <laughs> the general know himself. Him as a general. That's right. So, known, in, up. known in my house as the guy who takes out the garbage. That's it. Yeah, That's it. Mm -hmm. Well, hey, man, a few boats are starting to show up. You bet. Yeah. Time to get going? Yeah, there's a few in the, putting it in the dark as usual, but okay. that's, that's nothing new around here. So. We'll right go uh, see what we can make happen. How many river miles are we going today? Yeah. Who cares about miles? Nah. As long <laughs> as there's fish in between them. All right, let's go get them. go along here too so definitely worth tossing into oh yeah trait here a little green water maybe
What, what is that? I thought you were snag. No, no, no. Snag? It picked it up so soft, I was reeling up to it trying to catch it. It kept coming at me. I was like, gosh, yeah. darn it, is that a fish? And then all of a sudden, what you got a little you. dolly? Huh? Dolly? It doesn't feel real big, but it feels now like a real it's starting one? to. It's yeah. starting to wake as up soon as a little I bit. Park the boat over here in the shallows. It's gonna yeah. not be happy. Yeah, not a dolly now, Mike. He's, he's fighting a little too hard for it to be a. Just the softest, softest pickup. That's you know that's how those bigger it ones was seem. It's like side. They just get upset and like, do it I have just, something in my teeth? And he just kind of, he was swimming towards me sure. and I started feeling him, I reeling, reeling, reeling. I literally was picking up line, trying yeah. to catch up to him and all of a sudden I started feeling head shake. Absolutely. Yeah, he feels like a decent fish. You don't want to say hi, camera shy. These Okies don't work. There we go. I didn't think they, didn't think they bit those anymore. Right. Those things don't work. Oh, there we go. Well, he's, he's going fishing. upstream. What's he What's he doing going upstream? Well, strong fish go upstream, right? Yeah, the little ones go up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they do. Yes, they do. Running right up into their gravel here. You know, Dwayne, that fish might be larger than you think. I think it's so. It feels pretty, pretty stout. Don't worry, I'm just gonna sit here and drink some coffee while you play with that thing. Okay. Where is he? <laughs> he's, he's literally gonna take you up the rapids here, I think. I think. He, he thinks. Yeah. I'm don't literally. Have to, not to holler at these guys so they don't run your fish over. Trying to turn his head, and he does not want to come back down. I like it. Here we go. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I kind of said. I said, yeah, this is the this You want to go to the spot. gravel bar, Mike, or you want to? I think so. I think you pull on over there. He's coming down. I'll, I'll back up a little bit here, but. OK. Is that on the ocean, Mr. D? Of course. Are we fishing anything else today? I don't, I don't know. I don't think so. Look at that guy. He's going up Man. again. If he rams the boat, we're finished. <laughs> Come on, Captain Nemo, get that thing in. Yeah, buddy. Look at that guy. You know that fish on the Skagi yesterday was strong too. Yeah. Ten pound oh, they, fish they and just, yeah. just, just they just don't give up. I like getting out of the boat. Well, I like was, catching. I like landing fish. Yeah, I know it's a stupid thing to do, but boy, oh boy. Yeah, he doesn't want to come up. There he goes. Hello. See? Yep. I'd have to chase him. No, we're going to turn his head. We're going to turn his head. He's right out in front of you, Mike. Oh, there he goes again. <laughs> oh, man. Where is he Ooh. going? I don't know. Don't walk down stream anymore. I don't want him getting that tail out. You got enough line on that thing? Yeah. Yeah. Holy cow. What a, what a great hole to play a fish in, though. Well, I figure if I go this way on him now, maybe yep. I get his head turned back up here. Come on. And I think that fish is larger than you think, Dad. Oh, yeah. Allied. The new leader in heavy gauge aluminum boats. Allied boats have standard reverse chine and lifting rakes to help you plane faster and run at lower RPMs. Allied boats have several models to choose from, ranging from a 19 foot Mustang all the way up to a 32 foot Liberator. So regardless of what type of heavy gauge aluminum boats you are looking for, Allied boats will have it for you. Contact Allied boats today to learn more about these incredible fishing machines. Sportco and Outdoor Emporium is the largest local outfitter in the Northwest since 1975, providing thousands of people affordable outdoor gear. This summer, make your next outdoor adventure more affordable by shopping at our warehouse style pricing. We are a local Scotty dealer offering sales, service, and repair. Located in Fife and Seattle, come visit us today. The outdoors await you.
I just keep the side pressure to him. I, you know, he should start coming back up river. I do that again. Get in here. There we go. Starting to tire. There, there we go. go. Here he comes. Yep. It's all about line angle and head position. Come on, buddy. <laughs> He's right here, Mike. Here's okay. the Oki. Coming in. I thought she just wanted to keep going. Come back out here a little deep so I can get a net under him. Yeah. Good Lord. Yeah, of course. Look at this thing. Oh, there it goes. He didn't like me. Don't go too much close to the boat. I don't want him to decide yeah. he, that's a good place to hide. Yep, 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 yep. One more time. There we go. There he is. Okay. All right. That'll work. That's uh. You're gonna start the day with that? I'm gonna start the day with that. Are you kidding me? <laughs> and the uh, let's go back to the take, the subtlety. Oh, very soft on that fish. Are you kidding me? Look at the size of that tail. Now that is a steelhead. How's that for a tail? Yeah. yeah. That. That is a fish. Trophy. Look at that thing. That is a trophy. Look at the Stunt. belly on that dude. And the hooky drifter strikes again. For sure. <laughs> you know what? This is just the epitome of drift fishing for steelhead right here. I mean, Bill, Bill and I said we're coming out this morning and we're gonna drag our Okies. And uh, that is by far the largest steelhead I think I've ever caught. Congratulations. Hands down, yeah. It's a beast. Just looking at the thickness on that tail, yeah. and the, the deep tape. belly here. Look at the girth on it. Yeah, it's got some girth. That's a beautiful fish, Dwayne. Nicely done. Thanks for rolling me into him, Mike. Yes, sir. That is. Got a feeling there's one in there. Good Lord, that hole is something special. There he goes. That way, that way, guy. Come on, buddy. <laughs> He'll oh turn around. Oh my gosh. He knows Pour where he's going. My arm. How do you feel? Uh, we we can go home. <laughs> you know, Bill, you and I have talked about it. it only takes one. Yeah. It's, you know. Yeah, you're going to get one. That's, you that's the one. And yeah. you know what? That new and Gamagatsu bead hook there. That is the Gamagatsu bead hook. That's a two aught. I mean, see the size of mouth on that fish? Yeah, you can put an orange in it. So, two aught Gamagatsu bead hook and the uh, Robilize Oki. Add a little pearl paint to it. And this color combination. So, that's that liquid fire by that's Robilize. Oki. Yeah. Very difficult to you know, it's pretty surreal to come back out drift fishing and catch a fish like that with old school tactics from years ago, back in the 70s and 80s, growing up drift fishing. Come out here and do it. Yeah, modernization with stick lead. Doesn't matter, man. To feel that fish on that rod, on the drift, not watching a bobber go down, it's a game changer. When so, you feel, when you can feel the thanks, buddy. like that, that's awesome. Pretty darn cool. Yeah, pretty special. That was special. I'm gonna have yeah. to change this leader. Yeah. 12 pound fluorocarbon. Yeah. That's all you need. It's yeah, like, I would, uh, yeah. I'd put, put a new leader on. Yeah, I think yeah. so. Nah, I'll just run. All right, let's fire. go do this again. Okay. Billy, your turn. Oh, nice fish. They're all nice fish. This, yeah, they're all yeah. nice fish, right? I just put my darn glasses on. I'm like, shoot. Let me take my gloves back off. Hold on. <laughs> put gloves oh, on. Yeah. I got gotcha. you. Okay, I right got on. you. Oh, this one likes to come up river Don't too. Don't you worry. Nice. Coming right up. Here comes yep. hot hooks again. Hot hooks. The dog on Oki, do man. They just love the Oki. They do. What are you going to do? Boy, that one hammered it too. This was not the take of the first one. No. There's Hot that fish. fish right here. Chromer. Let them hang. 
but pull us over to the shore there. Yeah, there you go, Mike. Thank you. You just chilling right there? Yep. So chilling. Go go airborne here in any, yep, any there second. He goes. There he goes. Yep. Bring it up to the surface. See ya. Well, I had that frame too. I was waiting for him to jump. Uh-huh. Here we go, here we go. Stay on that side. Yeah, I'll keep Stay it over here. there, fish. Got a log right here to your right, so just FYI. Gotcha. I think you got a racehorse there, man. It may take off again. Silver bullet. Yeah. Nice fish. <laughs> Get all. There he goes again. Yep. Can't keep him. He's like like a like a dog. I can't keep him in the boat. <sighs> you want me to net the fish from the boat? Yeah, it's all sand here, so let's. <laughs> Let's keep it. It's like a hen, huh? I want to get it in the sand. I was just getting back here so you could stay out there. There we go. Might be. There we go. I'm gonna stay in the boat. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. There you go. Numero dos. It sure looks like it. Yes, it does. Yeah. Look at that thing's beat up Definitely. and. For sure. Flat belly. See yep. the see yep. the yep. line in the belly. Nice fish, though. Yep. Take she's it. she spawned. She's had lots of energy. Got airborne. Perfect. Okay. Let me hand you this mess. Yeah. Ready there, William? Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. Number two for you. Yeah, buddy. She's Thank ready you. To go. Thank you, little girl. One, two, Support from Northwest Sportsmen make Federal Ammunition the world's leading ammunition manufacturer. Federal uses the industry's finest materials, giving you reliable ammunition that delivers superb accuracy and optimum performance. Northwest hunters rely on Sportco to provide the best selection and prices in the Northwest since 1985. Sportco and Outdoor Emporium in Fife and Seattle. Your journey begins here. Yep, for sure. Oh yeah, big fish. Yeah, buddy. Nice fish. Oh, beauty. Gorgeous fish. Bobby's on the board. We got a good one. Oh yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, jeez, come on. Nice fish. Nice fish. You haven't been here but you know it. You've heard the sounds, smelt the air, and you've seen where your heart lands, if not yet. You haven't been here, but you've longed for a destination near or far, where time spent with loved ones and friends will go into the night and last in memories for a lifetime. You haven't been here, but you're on your way to a place not far. ExploreTheDowls.com New days, new beginnings, new friends, new loves, new dreams, new goals, new scenery, new job. No matter what the next chapter holds, Better Homes and Gardens Real Estate will be there to help you find the new that's right for your lifestyle at any stage of your life. Better Homes and Gardens Real Estate. Expect better. All right, welcome back here in studio, uh, Dwayne England, Tommy Donlin, and what did you think about that first uh, couple, couple? Man, times? that was a beautiful one. First fish? Yeah. Not too shabby. Yeah, that's not bad at all. You know, I've been working that uh, 11 foot 4 Silver Widow mm -hmm. at 1143, and let me tell you, that thing is phenomenal to fight steelhead on. I love that rod so much. If, uh, if it's within your wheelhouse, I would suggest strongly that you check those out. It is a fantastic steelhead rod rated at the 6 to 15. Can't, awesome. Can't can't say enough about bring, it. Bring 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 that tuna fishing. That's a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Yeah, let's idea. do it. Let's uh let's let's shift gears here, Tommy. Let's talk a little bit about some of our uh, fisheries to look forward to. Joining us tonight, uh, Dave Johnson, Pacific Fisheries Management Council (PFMC), as it's known to many. Dave, thanks for taking time tonight and uh, and uh, jumping on the show with us. Thanks, guys. It's an honor. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm, well, we'll see if we get through this, if it's still an honor. So, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so Dave, uh, we have um, ocean models to finalize. That's kind of what you're going to be busy doing here uh, as you move in through the week and the weekend. 
Puget Sound, terminal areas, et cetera. You know, on the surface, uh, one would think that our ocean coho fishery numbers are down substantially. But what I want you to do is take a little time and, and explain to us that we're now using the new FRAM model. We've basically gone away from the uh, OPI, the Organ Production Index, which historically, to me and many others, completely overshot our forecast. And uh, this seems to be a bit more accurate. So it may appear our numbers are down, right? Correct. Yeah, even our co-managers hated the OPI. And like this year, the OPI would be up around 1.6 million. Mm. And that's very unrealistic. Sure. So this new methodology and this new FRAM model that we're running, you know, there's still some tweaking to do. We can't do any tweaking to it this year on some of the lake runs and, and some of that down the Columbia River. But it actually came in at what actually returned last year. So hopefully that's a good thing, you know, be a little bit better predictor. So we've got our ocean opportunity, obviously, which is where, you know, you and I uh, spend day in and day out during the summer months. Um, but what about all the folks, Dave, that are going to be in the Puget Sound this summer? Is that opportunity, you know, looking similar to last year or how's that lining up? So far, it's lining up real similar to last year. Um, Right now, you know, tomorrow we have to get down from three options on the ocean to one. And then I read it on the to the council into the record on Saturday. And once we get that all ironed out, then we can start doing our interior in-river fishing in the Chehalis and the coast rivers and get Puget Sound all dialed in. So hopefully we can get the ocean done by Saturday or Sunday, and then Puget Sound can start modeling and getting all their stuff together. But it should be like last year. That's a good deal. So I think, you know, the cliffhanger, right, The what everybody really wants to know is where are we headed as far as Westport goes? Are we looking at seven days a week? Is that looking promising? Is there still a battle to be had there? Or how's that going? If you can, if you can share. there, There's still a, a little bit of a battle. Um, you know, the, some of the – there's 11 big charter boats and they want to go five, five days a week. Um, I always push for seven days a week for the working guy. Um, at the end of this process next Thursday, I own whatever the season is and I take a personal <laughs> and yeah. you know, if, a, if a family wants to go fishing on a five day a week, um, they go down on a Sunday and they're tired as heck, like you and I are when we get back off the ocean and they got to drive all the way back up to Snohomish County or Everett or something like that. And all if right. they were getting in an accident, something was to happen, I would take it personal. Yeah, yeah um, I concur. That's and I always sure. think about it. Yeah. Yeah. So um, it, it's very personal to me for the working guys to have seven days a week. Yeah. And so and that quota is there to be caught. We, yeah, exactly. we share the impacts yeah. all the way. Yeah. Go ahead. We didn't, we didn't burn through it last year, the year before right. we got to catch those fish, right? The right. last thing we want is a bunch of hatchery fish that are making their way into the river system and not being caught. Um, so talk to us a little bit about the sampling data and the sampling plan. So we've changed kind of the input to this whole salmon season setting process with this new model mm -hmm. that's on the front end on the back end. Are you seeing any changes to how samples are ta uh, taken or the sampling data how that's processed, is that pretty much all the same or is there a change? That's that's pretty much all the same. Mm -hmm. um, the sampling and the fish checkers and all that will be, you know, getting hired now and, and getting trained. And that's pretty much just going to be the same. It's just a new methodology that the salmon technical team has done the last couple of years and a, just a new fram model for the coho on the coast. Is there any validity or is there any proven uh, gains from sticking to the sublegal encounter um, quota, the, the sublegal encounter impact that we're subjected to year in and year out? Is it really a useful tool in modeling our fisheries other than just keeping recreational fleet off the water? Well, unfortunately, I'm the ocean guy, so I don't have to deal with that. Yeah, true out there. And yeah. I hope we never turn the ocean into Puget Sound. <laughs> yeah, that's uh -huh. well. Yeah, for sure. Okay. If they do, I'm gone. <laughs> yeah. um, so, you know, I, I told people 10 years ago, and I'm, when we went to impacts, it was going to be the end of us. Yeah. Um, so, you yeah. know. 
I think a lot of people will agree with you on that one, Dave. So i uh, tell you what, don't go anywhere. We're going to take a quick break. We come back. We want to delve a little bit more into some of the discussions going on with North of Falcon, kind of as you wind your way through the end process here uh, over the next uh, weekend, weekend, uh, weekend and week. And also I want to talk a little bit, I know you're ocean guy, but we're going to talk a little bit about this Siliguamish component and some of the impacts it has on our opportunity here in Puget Sound. So don't go anywhere, jump out for a quick break. We'll be back more with Dave Johnson. Uh, after the break, right here at Fisher Northwest. Allied, the new leader in heavy gauge aluminum boats. Allied boats have standard reverse chine and lifting rakes to help you plane faster and run at lower RPMs. Allied boats have several models to choose from, ranging from a 19-foot Mustang all the way up to a 32-foot Liberator. So regardless of what type of heavy gauge aluminum boats you are looking for, Allied boats will have it for you. Contact Allied boats today to learn more about these incredible fishing machines. Hey guys, I'm Big Mike. Come on down to the Edge Pro Shop and see me. We've got all the best brands under one roof. We've got Hawken, Procure, Short Bus, Pro Troll, Yakima Bait, Get em Dry Jigs, Northwest Bait Scent, Daiwa Reels, North Fork Lures, North Wild, Brad's, Superfly, Rocky Mountain Tackle, and of course, the greatest rods ever built, Edge rods. All right, welcome back here in studio, Dwayne England, Tommy Dolan, and of course our guest Dave Johnson, PFMC. Dave, I want to talk a little bit about some of the uh, some of the constraining factors that really weigh heavy on us at times as recreational fishers and opportunity there in parts of uh, Puget Sound. So obviously, the Oso landslide ten years ago this year, March twenty second, has a lasting impact not only all the people in that region in that valley, but um, you know, it, it did a tremendous, nature did a tremendous devastation to habitat up on that North Stilly. Talk a little bit about how that component, if it's a, kind of a cog in the wheel, so to speak, and allowing us to maximize our opportunity on Puget Sound because of the diminished or decline in those wild fish coming out of that North Stilly. Yeah, the, the run size varies from a low of around 900 fish to about 1,200 fish a year. Last year, they got about 1,100 fish. The problem with the steely since the landslide is it's running too fast. Mm -hmm. um, they also have a very high ratio of hatchery to natural spawners. Um, so right now the tribe's trying to buy a whole bunch of property around the river so they could build some estuaries to slow it down and make it more conducive to Chinook rearing. Interesting. Um, they're allowed on their NOAA permit to trap or beach sane 25% of the run and use them as brood stock in the hatchery. The problem is, is due to capacity in their hatchery, they can only put about 120 or 130 fish in their hatchery. Mm -hmm. And then they raise those fish, they put those fish in the hatchery until they're ready to spawn. They spawn those fish, they hold them in that hatchery for about two months. <laughs> They move them up to Whitehorse and put them up in that hatchery until they're ready to go out in the river. Mm. So, you know, there was a bunch of news yesterday about um, NOAA and the federal government giving the tribes a whole bunch of money. I have not been able to get a bunch of information on that yet okay. on how they're going to spend it and where they're going to spend it. Um, I would hope 
that since it's the constraining stock for their fisheries and our fisheries, that you know maybe we can big it, build a bigger hatchery or build a new hatchery yeah. out there. Mm -hmm. um, and then it wouldn't be that such a constraining stock. Gotcha. So um, it's very tough. They've also had lots of poaching both on the tribal side and the non-tribal side on that river. Yeah, it doesn't help. Um, mm -hmm. No, I know of a, a case they had last year where a guy shot a couple fish, large Chinook, with a spear gun, had them hidden, and then went to court and they threw it out. Really? <laughs> Unbelievable. Mm. So, so would you have any so, data, you know, so how, I, you know, they've been doing this program, I'm not sure, you know, has it been going five years, seven years, and then, is there any data collected from that kind of broodstock program? How viable is it? Have they been able to track any, you know, success or directional, you know, improvement or decline one way or another? They are, um, but, you know, I don't know a whole lot about it. I, I try to learn as much as I can, but right now I think it's just barely holding its own. Yeah. They're yeah. not gaining a lot. They're not losing a lot. It's just, unfortunately, they got very limited capacity. Yeah. Yeah. Well, hopefully that land acquisition goes through and they can start developing and, you know, reintroduce some rearing areas. So important for yep. survivability mm -hmm. of all smolt of all species of fish. So we're going to run up against a hard break here today. Before we get out of here, uh, you're the ocean guy. Give us a little insight as to some of the discussions wrapped around your halibut uh, opportunities this season. Well, halibut on the ocean this year will open up May 2nd. We got three days a week consecutive on the North Coast in May for the first time in God knows how long. Yeah. Um, four days in June. And we got three days in the South Coast, Tuesday, Thursdays, and Sundays. And we got to bump the annual limit to six fish finally. So hopefully Thank we can you. go out there and catch our quota. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, Bobby's been smiling since he heard that. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. That's all like, to I, you, brother. like I said. Yeah, I finally got the six fish approval. I cried. Yeah. Yep. Well, hey, we can never thank you enough for all the work you do, the tremendous effort, hours upon hours you put in with the PFMC, how dedicated you are to the cause and working hard for recreational anglers on all bodies of water. And so we tip our cap to you, my friend, and uh, glad you could take time this evening to join us. Uh, your information is always extremely valuable and we appreciate your time. So have a great weekend uh, into the week, walking your way through the uh, the finalization on some of this stuff. Yeah, thanks, guys. It's an honor to be on here, and I'll be at the Westin all week. And if anybody wants to show up and shadow me, they're more than welcome. Fantastic. Right on. Have right. a good he one, brother. Dave Johnson representing us uh, through the PFMC. And uh, check him out at uh, Kitsap Marina. Heck, He's yeah. El Presidente, and they're very busy up there. All right, Dave, have a great evening. Thanks again. All right, guys. Thanks again. Fantastic. Always good information coming from uh, Mr. Johnson, no doubt. Okay, we're mm -hmm. going to jump out for a quick break. We come back, you're going to capture uh, part three of our uh, steelhead fishing up north, Puget Sound Rivers with Mike Ainsworth and Bill Herzog. Right after this break, right here, Fish on Northwest. Living, catching fish, not only as a tournament angler, but as a guide as well. Catching fish is important, and Gamagatsu hooks for me, you know, they kind of help take the luck out of fishing a little bit just because they're a high quality hook. Obviously, you have a really good reputation for being very strong and very sharp. Gamagatsu, I use their products every day in the boat, and, you know, big part of my success. All Defiance boats are built without any structural wood materials. That is why all boats are backed with a lifetime warranty. All Defiance boats come standard with large fish boxes that are fully insulated so that you can ice your fish properly all day. All Defiance boats are foam flotation filled and unsinkable for the ultimate in safety while fishing offshore. Before you buy any boat, stop by or call Defiance boats today to ensure you are getting the very best glass boat your money can buy. If you're looking for the best fishing rods in the world, you really do need to take a look at the edge rods. I designed and built new machinery, and I think this new machinery has enabled us to build blanks like no other company can build without this equipment. There is no other rods in the world that are as good as these rods. You owe it to yourself to take a good look at them. New days, new beginnings, new friends, new loves, new dreams, new goals, 
new scenery, new job. No matter what the next chapter holds, Better Homes and Gardens Real Estate will be there to help you find the new that's right for your lifestyle at any stage of your life. Better Homes and Gardens Real Estate. Expect better. the entire time. Really frightened. Barely. So Bill, you know, yes. um, we've kind of just stuck with the Oki program today. Right, well this river is made for it. It yeah. really is. <laughs> well, It's faster, it's clear. You got to get down a lot of pocket water, mm -hmm. uh, some deep slots. They just fish very well in this type of water. Yeah, we've pretty much kept the bobber rods stowed away and just drift fishing as we go through, dragging lead. And, you know, much like out on the coast, the stick lead prevails, man. It these does. boulder areas and these deep chutes. And mm -hmm. um, do you have, oh, I may have that. Uh, boy, I tell you what, and it, it's applicable here in a couple places, but like yesterday on that Skagit, I'm going to start this over. There we go. Man. That thing there. I yeah. mean, are you kidding me? I, I made those just for the upper Skagit in the oh. big, clear, deep water with the boulders. That's something, a size that we'd never use no. in anywhere else, but very specific to up there. So this is, well. yeah, this one on my rod here, that's a standard six inch. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's almost twice as long. Right. Um, and I have... I got it hung up slightly, but guess what? I still have it. Came, yeah. Right? Use it all day long. Yeah, yes. You and bet. I can uh -huh. legitimately say that this six inch lead on here, I have fished all day. Right. I don't even think I've lost a leader today. I, I, I they've hung, hung up a few tree. times. I, yeah, I found that one you did. Wood, but, um, you know, Joe at Robolize is doing a great job reinventing the, the Oki. Yeah. I mean, is. as close mm -hmm. to the original as we can find. Well, he that, kept saying them back and forth to me. Right. He goes, what do you think of this one? I yep. sent it back on this, 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 and he about nailed it. Did I have great. a few authentics here that I've painted, changed the color to, added a little bit of that pearl. You know what's really been working, both out on the coast earlier in season with Mike and what we've been fishing here today, I take that liquid fire Oki Drifter that he is making and I mm -hmm. put that pink pearl nail polish over it and what do you for know? whatever reason, clear water, well, the, re the real one, the old ones, like these real ones, if you took those off, guess what you'd find under there? A bright orange like this. Right. Just yep. like that. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's working. Um, yeah. One thing I realized in, in testing his product is that that liquid fire has the highest UV. Well, and when do we use UV? Well, all the time. All any the chance time. you get. That's right. And any time, I, even when I cover it with the, the pink pearl nail polish, that mm -hmm. UV still shows through. And to Absolutely. me, that was like, you know what? That's the one I'm going to go with. So not that the liquid fire color won't work. It's a, tr it's a great color. Sure. We just, in these conditions, this clear water, something about that pink pearl that these fish respond to. I they mean, the I've hit essence. four fish, three fish today, got one yesterday when we were bank fishing, all on the same, all on the same oaky. Maybe and I've been around the size fours because this is big water out here. Right, right. So I think it's, you know, size four definitely works. I know you've gone back and forth between the threes and fours. But, I've, uh, I've seen the small one. When this is all I had back right, in the day, back right. in the day, and we use that all the time, and they work quite. The reason yeah. you, you caught them on the size you have because that's what you had on. Sure, yeah, exactly. That's mm -hmm. a good point. Yeah. Well, uh, it's uh, just another great day to, you know, utilize the drift fishing techniques that we are so fond of. And for me, I, I don't do it often enough. I, they never went away, Dwayne. Getting back to it as much as I can, and, mm -hmm. um, you know, coupled with a stick lead and of course the buoyancy of these you got to remember we're not fishing anything longer than a 20 inch leader no right uh, and it's right there in the zone where you want to be so uh this has been a lot of fun today man i'm glad you came along boy that one smacked it good nice drift nice fish. it seemed a little brighter than those fish earlier for sure these okies they don't work bill nope not at all they don't work Okay, coming around. Boy, this thing's coming right on in. Nice fish. Look at that thing. Blinger. That's a blinger. Yeah. I'm gonna lift the rod. Reel down on her. Yep. A little bit here. One more. 
Come here, darling. Ooh. Ooh. Let you go. Ooh. Oh, not quite done. That's a good hop out hand. in front of you. Just stay there. Okay, that, that'll work. Get it's deep. There we go. Good job, bud. Like that? Boy, she's gorgeous. That is a bright fish. Boy, that's a bright one. It'll work. That was like that other one I hooked that just oh. decided it was just gonna freight that train. Been here very long. You no. Know, bright as can be. That is gorgeous. Outstanding. Absolutely. Bright. Another gorgeous clear. fish on the open. Nice clear. Yeah. Fins. Translucent fins there. Mm -hmm. She hasn't been in there. here long. No, that's very fresh, for yep. sure. So okay. Gotta like it. Yeah. She's ready. Oh yeah. Look She's at had that. enough. There you go, mama. See you, darling. Hooked her right in that top lip too. She, oh, right on your leg. All right, we made it down to the takeout. We yeah. survived. We survived. So, so today was pretty much the Dwayne show, wasn't it? Mm, no. Team effort, man. Oh, yeah. Huh? You can tell. Team effort. Um, <laughs> I clapped, he rode, you hauled him in. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. how it works. Uh, you know, it's just uh, you have good days and you have days where you got to work for them. I was down in Oregon a few weeks ago. Had two takedowns, didn't stick either one. Only two fish I touched all day. Got soaking wet. Still a great trip, right? Mm -hmm. uh, today, just, you know, right place, right time. And what we were presenting and stayed with it the whole day, why change when it's working? Right. And uh, Mike, you're kind of liking those oaky drifters, huh? Might, might try a few of those. Might try a few of those. They've been yeah. around for 60 years. Yeah, you know. You know just more it's just a new idea, <laughs> it's, you know. But mm -hmm. uh, it's a great option. You know, they see a lot of stuff out here, especially oh, no doubt. tons of people here yesterday being Sunday. We come out Monday today for Monday, right? Morning. Yeah, yeah, we Look, did it fish. It looked like Saturday today. Yeah, and Goodness. we were fishing behind a lot of people. But, you know, one thing we've always done, Mike, we've done it too when I've been with you, is just not in a hurry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I am perfectly comfortable with batting cleanup all day long. You just have to fish fish the water just thoroughly fish. right yeah, just, just don't fish. blow by it to get to the next spot you just passed up a fish so mm -hmm. slow down it feels so good anytime and i mentioned it earlier today get back to drift fishing bill it's just you know it's just oh, it, yeah. you like just, riding a bike you can't duplicate right? it man yeah. it's like bobbers yeah. are great time and place like but, guys and people clients that know how to do it yeah that's what, I'll do. That's what you do you know you're in the strike zone yeah all the time yep they have to be our age yeah, to understand it. Did you lose a lead today? No. I, me either. Not a one. Fish the same stick lead all day long. Perfect. Mm -hmm. We're going to jump out for a quick break. We'll be in studio, back in studio, right after this. A Northwest favorite for almost 40 years. Arima boats are manufactured with pride in Bremerton, Washington. All Arima boats are built without any structural wood materials. That is why Arima boats are backed with a lifetime warranty. Arima can offer every boat with Honda outboard packages so that you can take advantage of the reliability and five-year top-to-prop warranty from your Honda outboard. Call or stop by Arima Boats today and let them help you get into your very next boat. Yep, for sure. Oh yeah, big fish. Yeah, buddy. Nice fish. Beauty. Gorgeous fish. Bobby's on the board. We got a good one. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, jeez, come on. Nice fish. Nice fish. Support from Northwest Sportsmen make Federal Ammunition the world's leading ammunition manufacturer. Federal uses the industry's finest materials, giving you reliable ammunition that delivers superb accuracy and optimum performance. Northwest hunters rely on Sportco to provide the best selection of prices in the Northwest since 1985. Sportco and Outdoor Emporium in Fife and Seattle. 
Your journey begins here. All right, welcome back here in studio. Uh, good, good funnelization there on the old, uh, the old steel head opportunity. Yeah, it was pretty impressive, man. We are heading back up there. Yeah, uh, we will get into that in a second here. Uh, Springer fishing the last couple of days, and it mm -hmm. continues here through Friday uh, for the first uh, recognized season that was set. And uh, numbers kind of interesting. You know, we we fished for a day and a half with Josh. We had two takedowns on our first day that didn't really stick. Um, we didn't see a whole lot of fish getting caught. Didn't hear of a lot of fish getting caught. It really wasn't like lights out as we get into that first week of April that you would really hope for. Right. Um, looking back, you know, the preseason run forecast on this is 187,000 mm -hmm. adult springers, Tommy. Um, that's about 86% of last year's actual return of 216, almost 217,000. Um, and the upper, upper Columbia will get about 121,000 of those fish this year. Yeah. So that's kind of where it's at. Yeah. Let, let's, so let's dive into like the actual numbers over the dam a little yeah, yeah. bit. Mm -hmm. Um, Okay, so as of April 2nd, mm -hmm. okay, just 95 fish, not even 100 we yet. Have not hit 100 by, okay, April, by April 2nd. 2nd. Yep. April 4th. Yep. Okay. 124 fish. Boom. We just got over the 100 mark. Just got over the 100 mark, just barely, yeah, right? Barely, 19 yeah. fish yesterday. Oh, and boy. so here they come, <laughs> right? Get ready. Now, yeah. so if you look back at history, right, and yeah. you kind of focus on, um, you know, a lot of data around April 13th. You look at last year's data for 2023. We had 637 sp spring schnook over the Bonneville Dam um, last year, April 13th. Okay. Gotcha. It's kind so, of a marker they use, right? That's right. Okay. So we're kind of painting a picture here, okay. right? Gotcha. We're, we're, we're currently at a balance of 124. Uh -huh. If we were following kind of what happened last year, we need to be to 637. But here's the deal the 10 year average for that time, for that date, that mm -hmm. April 13th mm -hmm. date, is 2200. And 10 fish well below well below not not brushing even close to that yeah. matter of fact i did some uh i did looked at that number and i uh figured out that um we have nine days to hit april 13th which mm -hmm. means we need about 56 57 fish per day uh to 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 meet that uh standard that was set last year which is still well below the 10-year average and of course um 2022 we had roughly 185,000. Uh, the 10 year average is a hundred and 150,000. So, you know, it's, it's performing well under, of course, going into it, we knew it kind of was going to right at this point. So, um, but there was a, there was a compact meeting today. That's right. So did they make a decision? How did that go? So I did read, I caught a report here right before we jumped in and uh, yeah, we, um, it was originally going to close here Friday, you know, after, after the fishery is done Friday, extending it the sixth through the ninth. Okay. So we get four more days on the water. One takeaway I did read on that. Um, they figured the last couple of days, we've been less than a hundred fish per day uh, with the, ang with the recreational angling fleet out there from, you know, from lower Columbia all the way up to Bonneville. So um, the four days extension, they're estimating we're going to have an impact of about 340 fish per day, which should okay. push us collectively should push us just right up to, or just barely over the allocation for recreational opportunity for the spring chinook fishery. So it started out slow again, which is strange because water conditions are ideal. Didn't have an extremely cold winter. Didn't have a tremendous right. snow melt off. Right. Big yeah. snow melt off usually uh, uh, produces cold water temperatures. Water That's temperatures right. right now are 47 to 48 degrees. Right. are going to continue to warm up. So uh, the water conditions are ideal. If the fish were here, I think guys and gals would be catching them like crazy. We'll see what happens mm -hmm. over this four-day extension. I think there's going to be quite a few springers over the rail. There was quite an uptick in, uh, you know, social media pictures and stuff today. So mm -hmm. we'll see how it goes. We'll continue to follow it and uh, report back. Jump out for a quick break. We come back, close out the show. The Pines Marine is the one-stop shop for the Pacific Northwest Angler. The Pines Marine guarantees the best price on a new and best service on a repower for your current boat. The Fines Marine is a Honda Premier dealership and one of the largest on the West Coast. The Fines Marine is a boat dealer who proudly sells Defiance, Allied, and Arima boats. All boats are built by West Coast fishermen for West Coast fishermen. The Fines Marine has all your boating needs to help you get out on the water. If you're looking for the best fishing rods in the world, you really do need to take a look at the edge rods. I designed and built new machinery and I think this new machinery has enabled us 
to build blinds like no other company can build without this equipment. There is no other rods in the world that are as good as these rods. You owe it to yourself to take a good look at them. For more than 90 years, you've entrusted one brand to guide you towards living the lifestyle you've always dreamed of. Now you can entrust affiliated Better Homes and Gardens real estate professionals to interpret your needs and help you find the home in which to live your dreams through every stage of your home buying or selling process. And through every stage of your life, there's Better Homes and Gardens real estate. Expect better. Welcome back here in studio, Dwayne England, Tommy Dolan. As we wind it down, yet another week. Yeah, another week. So wait a second. Now you got so we talked springers. We did, but then you showed us the, these beautiful steelhead that you were catching up in the northern end. Yes, we right? did. Right, yep. and so you're going to go back up there. And I noticed, you know, you got some presentation there on your your table. Yeah, we were talking about it at the break here. And I'm always fascinated by Yogi. you know all the different species of fish throughout the world. Sure. How, you, how you catch them, what you catch them with. Can you talk a little bit just about the sizing overall? Like, how do you choose that size hook? What hook is it? What, what, about, yep. what about the uh, oki okay there? The oki okay there. So that's yep. the number four. And so up there, Skagitsoc, big water. Lots of big water to cover, fast moving stuff. I want a little bit bigger presentation, even though the water is absolutely gin clear. But I look at the size of this and I go, I'm no longer that steelheader from back in the 80s side drifting, utilizing a small cheater and two number four size mm -hmm. hooks. That, that, that chip has sailed, man. So... Steelhead have bigger mouths, I think, that people give them credit for, Tommy. You look at it like a hen steelhead, and it has a narrowed head, and, you know, people think that their mouth is so small. But, you know, this is a 2 ot gamakatsu bead hook. Okay. It's 2 ot. It is strong enough to land that 18-pound fish, no problem, all day long. I am really only fishing the 2 ot bead hook on my uh, okies and my beads and stuff, and I will mm -hmm. use the one ot when I'm fishing or bobber dogging or drift fishing worms. Because the way the hook comes off of the tip of that worm, even if you put a cheater or a corky on there, the amount of hook that's exposed, the wide gap, the thin wire, the lightness or lack of weight on these hooks allows right. your presentation to float in its natural orientation where you want it to be. So I really think that two out hook coupled with that oki and the floatability of that oki on a 20 inch leader drift fishing is why we found success because it's a great combination. Right. So, yeah. Uh, fantastic. Good question. Thanks for uh, letting me uh, expound on that. Going to do it for us this week here out of the uh, studio. We got a full week ahead of us to get out and do something, go chase some fish somewhere, get a springer, get a steelhead. We'll be back next week right here. Have a great week. Have a great weekend. Until next time.